If you watched my Optiplex Buyer's Guide video and saw this image and wondered, where did the hard drive cage go? How did you get that out of there? I've got some good news for you. I'm going to show you how to do just that in this video today. And the obvious reason of why you'd want to do that is to fit a graphics card over 10 inches in length. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, but my drives, don't worry, that's easily solved, and I'll cover that in the build video. But anyways, let's jump right into what tools you're going to need to get the job done. All right, I want to start by saying I feel like this is on the easier side of things as long as you have some basic tools. Those tools starting with a drill of some kind. Now, if all you have is something like this electric screwdriver, uh, the good news is, is the material on this case is pretty soft. So as long as you have one with a decent amount of torque, uh, it should be able to do the job. It's just going to do it a lot slower. Now, I feel like this is the ideal solution, which is a cordless drill, which has um, a high-low setting, has adjustable torque, and you can really dial down the speed but bring up the torque so that you can take it slow because, like I said, this material is pretty soft. And that means if this is all you have, um, I really don't recommend this because this has one speed and it has no mercy. It, it will just go through this like butter if you're not careful. Now, since you're going to be using a drill, obviously we need some drill bits. And for the standard rivets, we're going to just use this 1 8 and uh, we're going to use a 3 16th for the larger stuff. And those are the only two drill bits we're going to need. Now these ones are specifically made to go through metal, so they're going to chew through it real easy. But if you don't want to spend the money on these drill bits, but you have some regular drill bits that um, aren't necessarily meant for cutting metal, they could do the job, but like the electric screwdriver, are just going to take a little more time to do it. The next thing that you're going to need is some way to extend your reach. And I'm using these quarter inch um, quick release uh, just because uh, all of these bits that I'm using are quarter inch quick release. But um, this will hold it secure, bits won't fall out, which is a real headache, trust me, I've been there. But if you, can, if you need to use another extension that maybe isn't like this, that will do the job. But just be prepared, bleh, be prepared to possibly be annoyed. Now, uh, you might need something like this flathead screwdriver or anything you can pry with that has a more narrow tip, uh, especially if you're not using these bits, which will cut through the metal pretty easy. You might have to pry it some stuff to get it out, and this is probably the easiest way. But uh, now, obviously, you're going to want to be safe. Uh, you probably don't need these, but just in case you're worried about it, they're never a bad idea, but um, we're not going to be spitting out metal at a speed where it's going to come out and hit your eyes. So I'm not going to use them, but you can if you want. And lastly, these are a must, gloves, because you're cutting metal out of something, chances are you can cut yourself. Don't ask me how I know. But uh, the last thing that we're going to need is a Phillips head screwdriver, because we need to tear this thing down first, because metal bits plus computer components plus electricity equals a short. So let's go ahead and get this thing on its back and get all these parts out. So now we come to the point where we've got a few things that we need to figure out, starting with this dude right here, which is a momentary switch used for chassis intrusion. Now there's no point in leaving this in here, so I just go ahead and remove this by disconnecting it from the motherboard by pushing down on the latch and wiggling it out of the connector. Then you can go ahead and pop it down and remove it and then just throw it in the garbage. Then we have this internal speaker here which plays Windows Audio. Now, that's great for an office PC that doesn't have speakers connected to it, but we're building a gaming PC, so there's no point in leaving this in. Besides, it's attached to the thing that we're trying to remove. So go ahead and just push down on this latch here, and then just pull it up, and disconnect it, and it can join that switch. Lastly, we have this temperature sensor here. Um, if you got a 3020, 
that's not in there. That doesn't exist. Um, it's only on 7020s and 9020s, and this has to stay in here, otherwise the fans will just spin at full speed. So we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect it from the board, and then it should just pop out pretty easy. And then we can just go ahead and set this aside for when we put it back together. So now we can go ahead and remove the hard drive cage and uh, we're gonna start at the front here and I'm just gonna go ahead and call these rivets because I don't know what the technical term is. I haven't tried to Google it and really couldn't get a definitive answer. But anyways, it's just pieces of metal from the hard drive cage that are passed through the front here and then they stamp it to the front to attach to the chassis. And there's five of these, two right here and then three down here at the bottom that we can go ahead and remove right now with our 3 16th bit. So now we've got one more on the front here to deal with, and that's this one right here, which is more of a traditional rivet. So I'm going to use the uh, one eighth to remove that one. So we're going to change this out, and same thing. All right, so now we need to flip the case upside down. And on the bottom, you're going to find five more rivets. One here, 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 and these two on the side. So now we're going to use the same 1 8 drill bit and uh, just drill these five out. All right, now we can flip the case back onto its side get at, there's a rivet right here that we need to remove with the 3 sixteenths. So just go ahead and drill that out. And that's going to let us get to the last rivets holding this thing into the case. And now, down in the case here in the bottom, and this is why we need this extension. Uh, we're going to use our 3 16 bit again. And we've got one here, 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 and here that we need to drill out. And once that's out, we can actually remove the uh, hard drive cage. Now this is where you want to be careful because if you go too fast, you can go right through this and right through the back of the uh, uh, chassis. So just take it nice and easy and as soon as it goes through get it out. Don't go all the way through. Now it's not going to go through this easy if you're using standard bits because they just aren't as sharp as these. So these metal cutting bits actually go through like butter. And this is why I definitely don't suggest that you use like an actual corded drill. So with that, it should come right out. So there's the hard drive cage. Now we could call it done right now, but as you can see, there's this plate on the back that the hard drive cage was attached to. And I mean, you could leave that if you want, but personally, I think it looks ugly. So I remove it anyway. And to remove it, we've got one, two, three spots on this side, and then one here, and then one there on this side. So let's go ahead and drill these out. And this is even more crucial because you're now right up against the uh, back side of the case. But there we go, we got it. So that side is out. 
So, I'm going to do this one. Nice and easy. Got it. And the last one. So, nice and easy. All right, I think we got it. Um, and this is where the screwdriver comes in. Now, it's probably just going to come right out pretty easy. Yeah, it's, it's out. Um, if you use a, just a regular old bit that's maybe a little bit dull, these two um, right here will be a little bit harder to get. And that's where this comes in. You can just wedge it underneath here and just pry until it pops off. All right, so that's how you remove the hard drive cage out of one of these things. And honestly, it was pretty easy. At least I think it was, but uh, I'm pretty sure if you think I'm full of crap, you're going to let me know down in the comments. But really, it, it was actually pretty straightforward. And the nice thing is you're not limited to using something like this uh, shorty GTX 1660 anymore. So you can pretty much stick whatever size graphics card you want in here, save for a handful of models that I can think of. But what's great about this is, is it works on several models. Like any Optiplex that uses the same chassis, it'll work on it. So uh, these 20 series, the 10 series, uh, some of the 900s, 700s, and even some of the 300s have the same uh, chassis. And I even noticed that uh, Kyle over at Bitwit had done uh, some stuff in like a Vostro or Vostro, I, I don't know, however you say it, but uh, it uses the same chassis as this, so it will work on that too. So that's it. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them down below. If you like this or found it useful, consider tossing me a like or consider subscribing to see future content. And as always, any tools or products used in this video will be down below in the description. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you with the next video.